Hi, my name is Camden from SideFX and I'm going to be going over the copy and transform node. So let's start by placing down our copy and transform. And you'll see it, it requires some primitives. So let's put our shadable geometry uh, into the top here. And now looking at our, our copy and transform, it doesn't appear that anything has happened uh, on the surface, but if we take a look at our info, by control middle mouse clicking, you'll see that our geometry starts with roughly 5,000 primitives. Uh, and as it goes into this copy transform, it ends up with about 10,000. And why this is happening is because of this total number parameter here. So we've actually duplicated our geometry, uh, hence the increase in primitives. So that's what this copy node is doing, is it's making a, a different number of copies and it allows us to transform those in different ways. So just like our transform node, we have our transform order, our translate, rotate, scale, shear in all axes, and our uniform scale, as well as our uh, pivot transform. So in order to really see something, we'll, we'll apply some sort of translation to this. And now we can see our copy geometries uh, stacked on top of each other. And you'll notice that the translation that's been done is based on the previous copy, not just from the original, which is why they stack in this way. Um, another right at the top here, we also have our pack and instance um, toggle. So we can turn this on and you'll see it creates packed geometries rather than copying from the original. It'll share the same geometry all the way up. Uh, and you can see that here, uh, we now have five pack geos. And this is just a little bit uh, more lightweight on the system if you have very dense polygons uh, or geometry rather. And it also exposes a couple more options we have like our pivot location, we can change uh, where our pivot is, is coming from. Um, and we also can display as different modes. So something like a bounding box could be useful if you're trying to see exact uh, uh, dimensions and parameters. Um, and we also can hide it completely. Uh, and there are other options too um, that currently aren't, aren't affecting this scene. <clears throat> um, the other aspect that I want to talk about, uh, actually before I get into that, we'll unpack. Um, and right at the top, you'll notice that there's a source group as well. Just like our transform node, we can select specific groups of primitives that we want to copy. Um, so just those will be, will be isolated and, and moved up from the original. Uh, and right at the bottom here, I want to talk about our output uh, group prefix and our attribute outputs, because these are really quite useful with this node. So the first thing we can output is a group prefix called copy group. And if we take a look at our info again, control middle mouse click, uh, you'll see that we've created a bunch of primitive groups. Um, and the copy group are the ones that are made from the copy node. So uh, each one is, is given a number based on which copy uh, it is that's been made in this stack. Uh, and some things we could do with that, for example, is we could isolate or remove. So I'm just placing down a blast node here and uh, we've just removed our original uh, and say, maybe we wanna isolate just our second copy. We can, we can isolate just that one on its own. The second output here um, is an attribute number. So our Primitives are now all assigned a copy num attribute, and we can see that again with our info here. Um, and our attributes, we now have copy num. Also in our geometry spreadsheet, it's a really great way to see this. If we go to our primitives tab, we now have copy num from zero to four uh, because of the amount of copies that we have. And to really easily visualize this as well, um, a color node, we can assign our attributes to a specific ramp. So I'm just placing down this color node, changing its class to primitive and its color type to ramp from attribute. And I'm gonna put our copy num attribute in here. Uh, and we'll just change these colors to make the, uh, the transition a little more obvious, something like red to blue. Um, and at the moment we're not seeing too much uh, in, in the way of a gradient and that's because our range isn't set correctly. So looking at our geometry spreadsheet again, we would have noticed that our copy num attribute ranges from zero to four. So we just need to change this last number here to four. And now we have this nice gradient um, through each of our copies. So this is the copy and transform node. Thanks.